Hello! Sometimes I like to try stuff out just because they're a little bit quirky and a little bit different and uh, a little bit stupid looking, one might say. And that's what we're looking at today. In here, we have something called the Bone Drone. And I'll just show you what the main frame is like. It looks like this, kind of like the cartoon bone. The idea being that your stack uh, with FC etc goes here. You have a motor that sits here, one that's underneath, um, and the same on, on the back. So you, you're looking at a quad that flies like this. It's interesting from the fact that I've no idea, because obviously you need the, the motor slightly off center to create your roll. Um, but I've just no idea what, what sort of roll authority is that gonna give. Pitch is gonna be amazing, but uh, roll's gonna be interesting. So let's see what's in the rest of the kit down in close up and we'll think about what we're gonna fit in it and how we're gonna build it. Okay, quick tour of what's in the bag, as I haven't actually got all the bits out myself yet. We've got the frame as mentioned, and you can see how they've sort of scored in the places you'd put your motors. Um, yeah, there's not too much to that really, is there? It's like stack and camera somehow goes there, motors go at the end, that's about it. We also had a bit of hardware in terms of some screws and nuts. And in here, which looks kind of useful, we've got little kind of motor protectors, I guess, that fit on. And this is perhaps the most useful thing. So this must be where the camera goes. Oh yeah, because that's going to go and sort of sit like that over the stack. And the idea is camera comes out here, uh, VTX antenna here, and perhaps if I was using ELRS or Crossfire, that would go out there. I'm thinking that's the thing. As to what to put on it, I had this stack lying around. It's a little 20 mil Rush FPV stack and I had a camera and an old XM Plus there. I wouldn't normally use an XM Plus. I'm a big convert to ELRS, but this is already wired up for it. It's quite handy. I actually had a brand new Rush FPV F7 flight controller, but there's a slight problem in that the ESC has a sort of proprietary, this must be with this flight controller. There's nowhere else to sort of solder and do it your own way. But to go with these guys, we thought we'd go old school. One of the guys I read talked about having quite small motors so you can sort of see over the top of them because obviously you're going to be facing like props. So this is, remember these guys? Cobra, 2204, 2300 KV. Um, A, because I'll have no problem running these from this ESC stack. I think this is uh, 30 amps, um, and these won't pull this much power. Um, also, because they're they're quite small um, and they're quite they're reasonably power efficient. I mean, motors have got really huge these days, but these are pretty dinky in comparison, and that should hook up quite nicely to the ESC. So yeah. Oh, I've just found something else in the bag. There's a little file here. I'm guessing if the uh, the corners were looking a bit rough or dodgy you could take those out feel fairly smooth to me maybe it's about like you know making sure you can get your screws in and, and things like that but yeah get a little file there just in case you had to do any filing if you do um watch out carbon fiber dust is not nice face protection keep it damp under running water is pretty good and uh, you should be okay but probably won't have to use that that is the idea for the build let's see how we get on so I'm just doing what I would call a dry fit. I've put the motors on and I'm just seeing if the motor wires are long enough. And I've got my little stack in place there. Make sure it's all very flush with that. Um, and one thing I want to do is just to see how this would fit on. And the quick answer is it won't. That is a reasonably small stack. But at so this side you can see that we're, you know, a, a, a good centimetre out or so there. Looking at the reference picture, uh, it seems to suggest some sort of all-in-one board very low uh, so there was space so I haven't even got the receiver in there yet and I also noticed that this little camera I've got is too wide for here you have to excuse this I'm, I'm one-handed it with the camera at the moment so I have to go with something like this it's a little run cam nano 2 I've got hooked up to this board for something else would we'll take that off but um, yeah the only thing I can really do because obviously if you were buying this and, and building it um, from scratch you, you just be aware that what you want to order is some sort of very low profile all-in-one board that doesn't have much of a stack there. I mean, even even if that VTX wasn't there, it still looks a little bit high with just the ESC 
and the flight controller. Um, but obviously I'm, I'm just building this for spare parts. So what I think I'll probably have to do is put some risers and put that a bit higher, which is quite good for sort of seeing over the props anyway. So we'll, uh, we'll see what that looks like. Uh, but we haven't started the soldering part anyway. So maybe something like this with a little bit of a riser just lifts me above that stack there. Anyway, I need to get soldered up and stuff before I really think about getting that in place. Hello, welcome to the field. I'm sat down here at the moment, not because I've fallen, but because it's quite a stiff breeze, about 12 miles an hour coming over this way. And so I'm just trying to protect myself from wind noise and generally freezing to death. It's about six degrees Celsius, which is pretty cold. On the hands, it's actually freezing with that wind. And uh, because we're in winter in the UK uh, at midday, the sun gets up to eye level and that's where it stays. So it'd be quite an interesting test. We're here, we're gonna try and fly this thing. Now, there are several concerns <laughs> I have about flying this. One is launching and uh, landing. Now I saw in a video, someone launched it like this. They span it up and they let it go. I quite like my fingers, so I'm not gonna do that. Instead, what I've done, I've kind of put the battery in a position where it's at its tallest. And if I just put that on something, um, hopefully it should be okay. Also, obviously I have to tuck these in nicely. I haven't done anything with the pids. Obviously, I'm gonna expect the pitch to be very good. I'm not expecting the roll to be as good, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen. This was, I haven't touched the uh, the flight controller. It was already set up previously for a three inch quad and it flew really nicely. Um, so it's kind of try it and see. I'm going to do a quick line of sight hover because I haven't tried it at all um, just to see how it gets on really. Landing wise I'm just going to cut the throttle and, and have it fall hopefully around my landing area but let's see how it goes. Okay you probably can't hear me because it's very windy but we are sat on a battery. Let's see if we can actually make this thing go up. Well, it's not actually too bad. Surprisingly. Looks bizarre, but there you go. Huh, we, we can FPV that, what the hell? I just bounced it back on this very precariously and we'll see what happens. Okay, we're up, we're FPVing, and the first thing I'm thinking is, why is there a propeller right in the middle of my view? It's a very peculiar viewpoint if you're not used to this. Um, generally though, it seems to fly okay. You can see I'm being quite gentle here, and I was a little bit worried because you could probably hear that little bit of oscillation in the hover as well. And this is where it goes a bit weird. Did you see that sudden movement? It seems that everything's fine, but when I go into a turn and I coordinate your and roll, something causes the flight controller to say, oh, the attitude has been lost, therefore I need to increase power to another motor, and this then has a chain reaction from the other motor that says, oh, something's going wrong, I need to boost my power, and before we know it, we're up in the air. So the times I've had those turns where I've basically done a regular turn it's suddenly shot up in the air almost going full throttle um, if you do it individually I found if you just yaw it's fine if you just use roll it's fine when I do the two together it's a problem now I thought not a problem I'll, I'll fly around I'll investigate this I'll see what I can do but then I was just coming back here and um, RX loss well, just had the RX fail there and it's come down really right there. So literally about 20 feet in front of me, which is a really weird place to get it. Maybe a sort of connection thing. Was having some weird problems when going on a corner and suddenly go up in the air. So something not quite right, but uh, we'll put another problem. We'll have another go, see what happens. I've been using ERS for the last good few uh, months of flying so it's been a while since I've used an XM Plus normally they're absolutely fine, I, you know I flew XM Pluses for yonks, um, I've had the odd dodgy one or ones go a bit funny and I was trying to figure out if that was the thing but I thought you know what I'll be careful I'll see what happens and I was interesting to try and figure out under what circumstances I'd get 
that sudden hit of throttle. You see there, I just very gently yawed around, not a problem. Um, I, in this one, I wanted to at least throw it around a little bit more. I was a little bit nervous about it suddenly going full throttle and then losing the uh, the RX and it ending up in someone else's property. But as long as I stay on the right side of the fields, i.e. that stuff you can see in front of you there, that's uh, under my control and I, you know, aside from cows, I shouldn't have a problem getting it back. So let's have a, a bit of a try and see what happens when we try and do some regular sort of light acro and absolutely fine on the backwards roll there although when we hit round you could see the the quad go up in the air and you see me dropping the throttle right down not that it makes a difference when it hits that situation it's very bizarre um, I'm sure this can probably be tuned out but uh, I wanted to see if it would do a regular roll and surprisingly I thought the roll was going to be really quite useless on this but it, it absolutely feels completely normal so pitch feels normal roll feels normal your feels fine it's just when you do the turn wrong it goes a bit mental I mean it's just going crazy on that um, that one turn it seems as soon as you coordinate that turn um, it, it all goes really badly wrong I just find that completely fascinating I'm sure there's probably some pitch to tune which is going to make you're less reactive but there were really no notes about what you might need to change with this i mean perhaps some people think this is you know there's some common sense stuff here come on get it together but no i didn't i didn't really think about it i thought let's try it and see what happens um and this is not what i expected to happen it, i i find it a really bizarre little little problem it always seems fine down this side of the field it's over the other side of the field goes <laughs> goes funny it would seem and uh, but I'm getting more and more confident with it. It's like okay, we've got this little weird thing with the coordinated turn, but the rest of the quad, or well, the rest of the way to fly the quad seems fine. And then this happens. At this point, I'm like okay, we've got something wrong here. We can't really carry on with this because we're just going to keep dropping out the sky. Well, there you go. We had to cut that a little bit short on the basis this kept falling out the sky. As I said, haven't used an XM Plus for a while. This one obviously seemed to have some sort of issue because, you know, I've used these for kilometres before and this wasn't happy. Either it was coming disconnected in some way or it just had some fault where it's just like I'm, I'm giving up and falling out of the sky. So, you know, I can replace that and try it again. The larger problem I had was obviously as I was going into a coordinated turn, something would just go crazy and zoom up it would go. I've had this before with micro builds and the problem was like the gyro was not reacting properly or there was some vibration in there and that vibration meant that as I briefly explained it thought the attitude was changing so it would increase motor power on the other side but then the gyro would then think it's going too far the other side and increase power back again and before you know it it just goes full throttle upwards um, at a rate. I can't see any particular problems with that as I said I know the flight control is good Perhaps it's gone dodgy, perhaps something's happening, perhaps it's a, a little bit of a pitch tune that needs to happen. I don't know. I can come back and look at that. That's probably going to be the new year, because what I can't do is sit outside in a six degree field, freezing my butt off, try, <laughs> trying to get this flying, because I don't really see this as a, a proper product. I mean, it's it's a bit of fun, and it's a bit curious, which is why I liked it, and... Um, yeah, I just don't really see the point of it. I mean, you could say, yeah, but what if you want to fly down really thin alleyways all day? You know, just buy a smaller quad and do it that way. There's no real point to this, aside from the fact it's a little bit quirky, which is, you know, why I kind of like it. But I'm not going to like it if I can't make it fly nicely. Um, so, you know, if you want something quirky and weird, there's this. Otherwise, just stick to a regular quad if you want flying because there's absolutely no reason for this to exist other than the fact it's a bit odd. This, uh, there are two versions of this on the Banggood website. This is the 230mm. There is a 208mm which is more the sort of use 3 inch uh, props on it I think. I went with this one because I already had the bits for it um, and I thought it would be easy to build but watch out as I said because this area here needs a real low profile um, sort of all-in-one controller. It doesn't really want to stack there. But anyway, this was uh, commonly supplied by Banggood for review. Thanks very much to them. And I will be back 
to fly it, I think in the new year, because I'm going to swap out this uh, the dodgy XM Plus with a proper Express LRS receiver, and we'll see if we can get something going, and we'll see if we can find a purpose for it. I'm looking for a really thin place to fit down, just to say, ha, there you go, <laughs> it's worth it. Anyway, that's been that for today. I hope that was helpful, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.